All right, our second presentation is by Wael Adrabo, uh, Malaria, an old foe thriving on steroids. Hi, everyone. A mosquito fossil dated millions of years ago. An Egyptian king ruled Egypt 4,000 years ago. And the remains of a human who passed away during the Roman Empire. What is common between all of them? A microscopic organism that was found in their body. This microscopic organism is the culprit behind one of the oldest diseases that mankind have ever had to face, malaria. Malaria is transmitted to us by mosquitoes. <laughs> The organism makes its way to the blood, where it invades the red blood cells, and it can eventually make its way to the brain, blocking the blood supply to the brain and causing death. 95% of the deaths related to malaria is in Africa, where two, every two minutes a child passes away from malaria. And that is why we went to Africa, because one specific reason, not all the children die from malaria, and most importantly, not all the children feel or fall sick when they are infected by the disease. Typically, once we have, once the organism gets inside the bloodstream and invades the red blood cells, our immune system inside our bodies responds by organizing its lines of defenses. It has a front line that attacks the organism and attacks the invaded red blood cells. And another lines of defense that would try to reorganize and regroup the front lines of defense. When we looked at the children who fell sick in Africa from the disease, we found out that these children, they release specific chemicals. These specific chemicals, not only they regroup the front lines of defense against the disease and against the organism, but also it compromises the front lines, making these children more vulnerable to the disease and more vulnerable for more parasites and more of these organisms to invade more red blood cells. However, when we looked at the children that did not fall sick of the disease, we realized that they don't release these chemicals in their bloodstream, making their, their immune system and their immune response, the front lines, much more stronger and they respond much more, much better to the organism that's invaded the red blood cells. And that is why future treatments against the disease, it has to look into not just fighting the organism, but also the way we respond to the organism. And that is how we can bring a brighter future to these children in Africa. And with that, thank you very much. Wow, very wonderful work. Uh, it's so nice to know that you're doing this. Thank you. So uh, tell me what country you call home. Egypt. Egypt, okay, okay. I just came back from Egypt. I was there last week. So uh, yeah, I did. It's a wonderful place. Yeah, so, um, so tell me, you're a postdoctoral associate. Where did you do your doctorate? Here. Here, all right. All right, very good. And so what brought you to NYU Abu Dhabi initially? So eventually, uh, uh, initially I came to the UEG. I was working in the UN. I decided to do my Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I decided uh, yeah, uh, to start education over and uh -huh. yeah, take it from there. Uh -huh. I did my PhD and uh, uh -huh. And so do you do field work in, in Africa yourself? Yes, yes. Me and my colleagues, uh, yeah, it takes uh, definitely more than one month. So yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, all my colleagues in the lab, we have collaborators in Africa, and so we do field work uh -huh. behind us in Africa. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. yeah. And so when you go, do you always go to the same place or do you move around? Do you find that there's different geographical different villages. differences? Uh -huh. have, uh, yeah, so we visit, we arrive at the capital and then from the capital we drive to different villages where each children they live and we go, we set up camps in the villages and where we can try to uh, deliver the uh -huh. yeah. Does this fall under the rubric of what's sometimes called precision medicine? Absolutely. Absolutely, because now we have treatment that looking into uh, fighting the organism. This is not specifically how every child would respond to the organism when that organism is start invading the red blood cells. 
Uh -huh. So for us, um, the way this revelation is that we have to take into account these chemicals that are being released. Imagine uh, with me a treatment that you would have fighting the organism and a complementary treatment that's blocking these chemicals with caution because these chemicals they have different roles. They uh -huh. can yeah. So imagine it's complementing each other. You block these chemicals in a way that doesn't harm the body, uh -huh. but also enables the immune system, and you have a complementary drug that fights the, uh, the organism. Uh -huh. So that would make it much more efficient. And it would these chemicals, the level of these uh, chemicals, it changes from one child to another. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, fantastic work. Best of luck to you. Thank you so much.